has changed a lot since I was little. Originally, TVs used an antenna and phones are plugged into the telephone lines. Now, TVs are plugged into the telephone lines and phones use an antenna. When TV got into full swing in the 1950s, networks figured we wanted to watch couples argue with each other in their cramped New York apartments. Happy families living in single family homes in suburbs or small towns also appeared on our black and white TV screens. When color TV became popular in the 1960s, game shows and soap operas dominated daytime TV on weekdays, and evenings featured variety shows, westerns, and situation comedies. Some shows were in color, but some were still in black and white. Cartoons dominated Saturday morning. Some were old movie studio classics, and some were made for TV. Notice the unusual shape of the early color TV screen, including the monitors in Alvin's control room. TV manufacturers had not yet found a way to keep the colors converged to the corners of the screen, so they eliminated the problem by eliminating corners with round picture tubes. You remember picture tubes, don't you? In computer monitors, they were called a CRT, which stood for cathode ray tube. The Cold War spawned spy shows. The space program inspired science fiction shows. Motorola, now known for cell phones, solved the color convergence issue and introduced color TV sets with a rectangular screen for 1965. Situation comedies got creative. The fish out of water motif became popular, like putting hillbillies in Beverly Hills, California, New Yorkers in rural settings, socialites stranded on a desert island, and astronauts finding themselves in the Stone Age. In 1971, CBS didn't want to be the hillbilly network anymore and wanted to return to New York families arguing with each other, this time in cramped housing developments. As a child growing up in the 1960s, I saw this image regularly. The seal of good practice. It appeared for just seconds between commercials, and a voice announced something like, This station is a member in good standing of the National Association of Broadcasters and displays the seal of good practice, adhering to the television code. It also appeared in the closing credits of many network TV shows. The television code was developed by the National Association of Broadcasters in hopes of avoiding government regulation. The television code prohibited the use of profanity, irreverence for God and religion, bathroom humor, sexual situations, graphic presentation of cruelty, and details of crime. Excessive use of horror was discouraged, and law enforcement was presented in a positive light. Visual entertainment had moved beyond the walls of movie theaters, and broadcasters were aware of the impact of bringing such entertainment into living rooms where anyone could be watching. Popular TV talk show host Dick Cavett voiced a television code public service announcement in which he said that the television code was there to protect children. In the 1950s, the public believed that children should learn to respect their elders and law enforcement. It was also believed that children should be sheltered from terrifying images. They wanted them to be able to sleep at night and be fresh for school in the morning. Most parents knew that their children would be curious enough about sex without getting TMI in the form of entertainment. These standards were so high that bedroom scenes in I Love Lucy showed the married couple using twin beds even though Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz were married in real life. That might explain why so many shows featured single parent households. That would safeguard TV producers from screenwriters writing pillow talk into the script. Several heads of households were widows or widowers, and sometimes the entire family was the same gender. The head of the household usually had an assistant, an aunt, an uncle, a grandmother, a maid, or a butler to help with household duties and to care for the children. Between changes in culture and the rise of cable TV in the 1970s, the television code became unpopular and was dropped in 1983. The television code era saw the rise of a specific kind of comedy known as camp humor, defined as drama so exaggerated that it's funny. The Batman TV series was a prime example. Batman and Robin were bully deputized agents of the law, and the show was more like a comic book than the actual Batman comic books. According to Bill Mooney, who played Will Robinson in Lost in Space, 
The first season of the sci-fi series was about adventure. In the second season, the show shifted into high camp. Lost in Space debuted in 1965. Star Trek debuted in 1966. At the 25th anniversary Lost in Space reunion, an interviewer asked the cast if they were worried about competition from Star Trek. Bill Moomy answered, most of us didn't know what was on. We were worried about Batman. Lost in Space owed much of its success to Jonathan Harris, who played Dr. Smith, a stowaway whose blatantly selfish behavior often put the Robinson family in peril. Harris knew the audience would get tired of the troublemaker, so he rewrote scripts making Dr. Smith extremely prissy, smarmy, arrogant, and cowardly. His over-the-top antics became the most memorable part of the series. The ridiculous humor of many 60s TV shows drew viewers while maintaining the guidelines of the television code. For me, that was the golden age of television. When my son recently noticed that I stayed up late to watch Get Smart on MeTV, he gave me a Get Smart DVD collection for Christmas. Today, video entertainment comes from so many sources that it is impossible for one organization to regulate it. Any nerd can pick up a smartphone and become a talking head on YouTube. Who'd ever thought that would happen? And who'd ever thought anybody would watch stuff like that? Well, perhaps by trial and error, we can develop our own television codes. That's what I do. Think about what you watch. And as it's so popular to say these days, be safe.